हेलो ऑल वेलकम टू लेट्स ट्यूट टू गेट मोर सच वीडियोस डू सब्सक्राइब टू आर चैनल एंड आल्सो प्रेस द बेल आइकन टू नेवर मिस एन अपडेट फ्रॉम अस वी आल्सो हैव कोर्सेज फ्रॉम डिफरेंट सब्जेक्ट्स डू चेक देम आउट ऑन अ वेबसाइट व्हिच इज www.letstute.com सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद टुडेस सेशन सो माय फ्रेंड्स डू यू रिमेंबर व्हाट डिड वी लर्न इन द लास्ट वीडियो यस to remind you all we were doing different methods of reproduction and the first thing that we started with of was asexual mode of reproduction and so far we have already discussed three methods that is fission fragmentation and regeneration so today let's move on to the other three methods of reproduction so the first method that i am going to explain you is known as budding Yes, have you ever heard of budding? No. So let me make it clear to you. So budding is a type of method which is a sexual mode of reproduction occurring in unicellular or multicellular organisms which have very simple body organizations. Budding is a process which occurs where in the parent body a an outgrowth known as a bud is formed. at one specific location so how does this form so in these particular organisms the process uh, uses regenerative cells which forms buds or outgrowths because of repetitive cell division occurring at only one specific location creating an outgrowth or what we call as a bud so these buds they remain attached to the parent body till the time they are growing and they only detach from the parent body once they are fully matured or once they are fully formed after that they detach from the parent body as a complete new individual this is a, another example of a very beautiful mechanism taking place in organisms we are unaware of in budding the parent identity is maintained why because the outgrowth or the bud which is formed gets detached from the parent body and hence nothing of the parent body is lost and hence the identity of the parent is maintained now budding are of two major types exogenous budding and the second one is known as endogenous budding now what do we mean by exo and endo so as the name suggest in these two different types of methods the buds or the outgrowths are formed either on the outside of the parent body or either on the inside of the parent body so first let's discuss the first one which is exogenous budding in exogenous budding the buds or the outgrowths are formed on the outside of the parent body and the wonderful example of organism showing this particular type of budding is hydra The another example of organism undergoing exogenous budding is cycon which is a type of a sponge. So moving on to the second method of budding which is known as endogenous budding. Now remember I told you outside the parent body and inside the parent body. So in endogenous budding the buds or the outgrowths are found inside the parent body and hence these buds are known as gemmules. And this process is known as gemulation. So the organism which uses endogenous budding is a fresh water sponge known as spongula. Now spongula uses endogenous budding during unfavorable conditions. So like fission, budding can also be of two different methods: simple budding and multiple budding. In simple budding, only one bud is formed at one time, whereas in multiple budding, multiple buds are formed at a single time. So friends let's move on to another method of asexual reproduction Well this method is the most interesting up, I found up till all the methods of reproduction that I have shared with you This method is known as spore formation But before getting to know what spore formation is first you think to what I'm going to say now My friends have you ever seen or observed your fruits vegetables or bread spoiling have you ever seen them going bad 
If yes, then have you observed white, spongy or cottony like structures growing on their surfaces? If yes, then have you ever wondered from where did they come? Have you ever wondered? No? So well, hold on for few more seconds because that question is going to get answered today. So the white cottony like structures which grows on your spoiled fruits and bread is known as mold or rhizopus. So rhizopus is an example of an organism which reproduces using spore formation. So where did it come from again? So spore formation is a method which uses spores to reproduce and to grow. So spores are contained in a structure which are known as sporangia. So now you have to imagine that sporangia is a kind of a bag which is round in shape. It has a knob like structure which is held by a thread long structure known as hyphae. Something like a bat and a ball on top of the bat. So for example, if this is sporangia and this is hyphae, so this sporangia contains spores which are responsible for reproduction. So these spores come out only when this sporangia burst under right condition. Now these sporangia are dispersive in nature. What do we mean by that? That means it can get scattered away through wind, insects or rain. So that is why it comes in lens on our food and spoils our food. So these spores when they are out of the sporangia, these spores are very 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 resistant to many adverse conditions. They do not get affected by very high temperatures, low temperatures and they are always roaming in the environment ready to attack and hence they come and sit on the fruits, breads and many other eatables to spoil them. And the example of spore formation is rhizopus which uses this method as a reproduction. But rhizopus is not the only one. The other organisms which uses spore formation for its reproduction are mosses, ferns and many of other bacteria. However, these spores cannot survive in dry like structures. It needs moisture and hence it attacks fruits, vegetables and bread which is moist. So if you want to really have a look at how rhizopus looks, then you may grow a bread, make it moist and keep it aside for few days in a dark damp place. And after few days, you may observe that this cottony like structures have grown all over the bread. That is because of rhizopus growing, because of spore formation method of reproduction. I just love this method. It amazes me every time. So that's all for spore formation, my friend. I hope it, get, it gives you a clearer picture on understanding what is rhizopus doing on your bread. So that mystery gets solved today. Thank you. To get more such videos, do subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to never miss an update from us. Till then, keep watching, keep learning.